here I have taken a battery eliminator which can vary the potential difference from 2 to 12 volts in the steps of 2. So that is 2 volt, 4, 6 and so on up to 12. Now I have connected a bulb across this battery eliminator and I'll switch it on. You have seen that the bulb is glowing. If I pull it back, the bulb is not glowing. Again, the bulb is glowing. Now, the bulb is in off condition. Of course, there is no big deal in this activity. But the main idea of conducting this activity is to investigate what makes the bulb to glow. Right from class 6th, you have studied that the bulb is glowing just because of electric current. Today, we are going to talk more details about the electric current. You are already familiar with this electric current concept. But to understand deeply, we have to study some more details of the electric current. We know that electric current can be defined as the charge passing through an area per unit time. I is equal to Q by T. In the last chapter, we have studied the charges when they are at rest. That's why it was called static electricity. Static means rest. Now, we study what happens when the charge is in motion. The branch of physics that we talk about charges in motion is only known as this current can be defined as the charge passing through unit time. If you consider an area here There could be different charges and we all know when the positive charge moves in one direction, the negative charge will move in the other direction. If we talk about the electrolysis, in the electrolysis, both positive ions, they will be moving towards cathode and negative ions will be moving to the towards the anode. So both positive and negative charges exist and they will be moved always in different directions. If you talk about the substances which are called semiconductors, these are semiconductor devices. This is a very known semiconductor device for you which is known as LED the light emitting diode so these light emitting diode and this Zener diode these are all called semiconductor devices in semiconductor devices the electric flow is due to both electrons 
and the positive holes we will talk about this electrons and holes motion in the topic of semiconductor devices why did i say now that there could be any kind of charges that is it may be having only positive charges or it may be having only negative charges or it may be having both the two charges in our particular concept we are more concerned about the conductors the metal wires or any metallic substance which allows the flow of charge through it so these conductors will allow the flow of charge in the form of electrons only so this picture is more concern for the present topic as i is equal to q by t this is known as steady current but it is not the case in most of the situations therefore we have to define the electric current in a general way as the small amount of charge passing through an area in the time intervals between t and t plus delta t between t and t plus delta t if you consider that delta t tends to very small interval i mean zero then limit delta t tends to zero delta q by delta t is only known as the current which the right side part is in which the right side part can be written as dq by dt rate of flow of charge rate of flow of charge is increased or we can say the rate of flow of charge is always increased in the direction of the current direction of the current so the direction of the current in your lower classes you would have studied it is the direction of positive charge this is called conventional direction of current in fact in metals the positive charge won't flow only the negative charge that is electrons move so now conventional direction of current can be taken as opposite to the flow of electrons the flow of electrons if it is in this direction then that is called electronic current direction so the conventional direction of current and electronic current direction are just opposite to each other now hereafter when i say the direction of current means you have to consider the conventional direction of current only throughout the topics of electricity and magnetism when we talk about 
the direction of current you must understand that it is the conventional direction of current unless and until it is specified as electronic current the direction of current depends only on the flow of charge not on the direction of flow of particles now if the electric field direction is from left to right then all the positive charges will move in the direction of electric field and the negative charges will move in the direction opposite to the electric field this is my direction of current how can i say that suppose let's consider that the positive charge is of plus 103 units suppose one more charge has come here then it is added so 104 this is the charge so dq by dt is positive now let us suppose that one electron has gone in this direction then also 103 is already positive as one electron has gone from this side to this side the positivity is increased again it is 104 so even the electron moves in this direction the dq by dt is increased the rate of charge per unit time is increased therefore we have to say the direction of current is the direction of flow of charge not the direction of flow of particles we have already talked that in conductors the electrons only cause or electrons only constitute the current because if you go through the atomic structure inside the nucleus both protons and neutrons are tightly packed outside the nucleus the electrons will be revolving if you take one simple atom like this you can clearly distinguish the electrons that are belong to s orbital are the electrons that are belong to p orbital clearly but if you take a substance in 1 cubic centimeter there will be an order of 10 to the power of 22 to 24 atoms exist the electrons that are far off from the atoms are loosely packed these loosely packed electrons are only known as free electrons these free electrons are only available with the conductors the substances like plastic or wood there won't be any free electrons these free electrons will move in a very random order here we are talking about the electrons in a wire or in a conductor and these electrons free electrons will move very randomly in the absence of electric field so 
as there is no specified direction for any individual electron you can consider the average velocity or average speed of the electron is zero therefore no current is constituted here the electron the spheres the small spheres are considered as electrons and they are continuously in the motion of electron now here these nails are representing the bonds or pions there is always a collision between two electrons and collision between ions and electrons and collision between the bonds and electrons now i can show you considering these marbles to be electrons way path to move and this is another demonstration through which we can understand the random motion of electrons what happens if an electric field is there for that let us imagine a model in the form of a cylinder and this cylinder is packed with two lids in such a way on one we have given positive charge and on the other we have given negative charge it's quite possible for us to give two different charges because we have studied how to get the charge on any substance induction conduction or rubbing now what happens the electrons now they are under the influence of an electric field what is the direction of electric field here it is again from positive to negative therefore the electrons will start moving towards the positive charged lid once the electron come here it neutralizes these positive charges this process will happen till the total charges are neutralized so here the electric current is constituted for small interval of time that is when the electrons are reached to this positive plate then they will neutralize this one then after some time it simply becomes neutral and no more electric field will be there and then this electrons the current cannot be constituted so this is the situation when this is neutralized now let us imagine suppose if it is getting continuously the positive charge and it is getting continuously the negative charge then what happens the current is continuously constituted in the conductor so for that we have to design a device which continuously make this positive and make this negative that is nothing but this cell so this cell 
will always have the positive at this end and at this end it is negative because of chemical reactions that are happening inside the cell we can maintain all the time this is negative or lower potential and this is a higher potential so electric field is existing therefore it is quite possible that it can supply the steady current that's what we have discussed when we discussed the capacitors and we also discussed what are the disadvantages of this battery when compared to capacitor and what are the disadvantages of capacitors capacitors cannot supply the steady current that what we have seen in the activity when capacitor is charged and it is connected across the bulb the bulb glows instantaneously and then the bulb is glowed off so now this is the device which makes this positive and this negative of course as long as the chemical reactions are taking place inside the battery once the chemical reactions are exhausted then this battery is of no use it cannot create any more potential difference between the positive and negative or lower and higher potential sides then no current can be constituted so if i connect a wire with the help of a battery or in the very beginning i have shown one activity that battery eliminator then i can continuously get the constant current or steady current now we can compare this the current or the flow of charge with the water circuit let's do the activity and then we will compare is coming from the tub and again going into the tub no water is being consumed here we can compare the flow of electrons with the flow of water now no electron is being consumed don't think that electrons will be consumed if the flow or if the constitute current here the water flow is there just because of pressure difference similarly there should be a pressure difference that creates the current in the wire this pipe is acting like a wire this motor which is creating pressure difference we will talk about electric circuit now the corresponding how the water is running through the pipe the similarity can be observed in this electric circuit this is a simple electric circuit consisting of one cell and then wire a bulb now the electrons are passing in this wire reaching this bulb and through the bulb they will be running and then again they are going back to the negative terminal of the cell you can compare this cell with the motor pump which is creating the pressure difference here this electric pressure difference is only known as potential difference or voltage difference okay do you know what is the potential difference across the two terminals of the cell have you ever seen what is the voltage of this cell 1.5 so that 1.5 volt difference is here so that is why the bulb is glowing so you can compare the elements of that uh, water pipe with this electric circuit as the water molecules can be compared to the electrons that are flowing in the wire and the cell can be compared to the motor pump which is creating potential uh, there it is pressure difference and here this cell is creating the potential difference
just because of pressure difference water runs through the pipe and here just because of potential difference only the electrons will run through the wire and this even though it has got magnitude it has got direction that is always from positive to negative but still it is not a vector to call any physical quantity as a vector it should have magnitude direction in addition to that it should obey the law of vector addition the electric current fails in the third aspect therefore we cannot call it as a vector but we call i d l this is called current element we will talk about this in magnetism this is a vector here we have assigned the specific direction for this ideal in the direction of current and we will make it as a vector because when the quantities are needed to explain the orientation or to explain the rotational mechanics we have to make them vectors by seeing the original results of the experiments so by seeing that ideal is made as a vector and the direction is given as the direction of the current after defining we have to write the unit of current so i is equal to q by t that is coulomb per second this coulomb per second is only known as ampere and the name of the great physicist andrew mary ampere and it is simply written as a suppose 5 ampere so 5a 8 amperes 8a like that we will represent next thing we have to we have to define we have to give the units then dimensions and then whether it is a vector or scalar these things and finally we have to give the formula so for any new quantity we have to do all these things we have defined we have given the units and then we have already discussed whether it is a vector or scalar then the formula is already given q by t only we have to talk about dimensions as current is a fundamental quantity so we can put the dimension as a itself remember charge is not a fundamental quantity current is a fundamental quantity so charge if i want to write the dimensions of charge i know that q is equal to i times t so current ampere t so a1 t1 of course m0 l0 that we will write so this is the dimensions of current so we have discussed all these aspects of current we know that i is equal to dq by dt and dq is equal to i dt and q is equal to integral over 
आई डी टी बेस्ड ऑन दिस फॉर्मूला द प्रॉब्लम्स कैन बी गिवन हाउ इफ द करंट इज रिलेटेड टू टाइम इन सच अ वे दट फाइव टी प्लस फाइव टी स्क्वेर प्लस टू टी प्लस वन देन वाट इज द चार्ज पासिंग थ्रू द कंडक्टर सो वी हेव टू टेक इंटीग्रल ओवर आई डी टी एंड द टाइम इंटरवल विल बी गिवेन इन बिटवीन टी इज इक्वल टू टू सेकेंड्स टू थ्री सेकेंड्स सो टू टू थ्री आई डी टी दट इज i 5t square 2t plus 1 dt 2 to 3 now i know that integration of t square is t cube by 3 this is 2t t square by 2 plus t now my job is very simple i have to keep t is equal to 3 first minus t is equal to 2 next i can do this one the other way that they may give the charge as a function of time suppose q is equal to 3t square plus 5t plus 6 what is the instantaneous current at t is equal to 2 seconds so current is equal to dq by dt now i have to differentiate it 3 into t square derivative is 2t 5 into t derivative is 1 and this is 0 now at t is equal to 2 seconds suppose if they ask then i have to replace 3 2 into 2 plus 5 that is going to be 12 plus 5 17 ampere so this way the numericals can be asked so this is the introduction of electric current